Richmond clap back at Carlton to get a big win at the MCG. It turns out Essendon may not be a rotting corpse this season. And Sydney dropped four points in a game of football. This, this is, is the Drew Footy Show. Hey, long road, you could tumble down this black hole. Stuck in Sunday League, but I'm on levels. Hello, you Dolphins, and welcome back to another episode of the Drew Footy Show with my good friend, Jesse. Jesse, what's poppin', my, my brother? Oh, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. The Eagles only lost by three goals this weekend, so I'm on top of the world, Drewzy. How are you? Hell yeah. Never been better, buddy. You know what would make me feel even better? If I hit my sub goal for this month, 7.5K. I'm like, I don't know, like 90 away or something like that. And we're like 10 days out from the end of the month. So 45% are still filthy pigs and aren't subscribed. So subscribe if you haven't already, if you enjoy my content. And if you want to get involved in the Drew Footy Show, go follow Drew Footy underscore on Instagram, where we get our questions, topics, and of course, the quick fire steamroll segment of this show. Go follow it up. Let's get into the show. Bloke of the week this week, Jesse, comes from the Friday night game between St. Kilda and Essendon. And we see a man here in the crowd with the coach's board. He's doing the rotations. He's making sure the matchups are all on point. Have you ever seen a man go to the football with a coach's board? That's a proper bloke move. Yeah, definitely the first time I've seen that. I do have a memory as a, as a kid of being about nine years old. And I remember writing the Eagles 22 against Melbourne one day on a piece of paper. And I was like, I'm going to run all the interchanges. And about halfway through the first quarter, I looked down and I was like, what the fuck am I doing? So I wonder <laughs> what point that, that bloke actually had that moment of realization. Um, I don't know if it ever came to him. He's going to be the next coach of St. Kilda, the way things are going. But for now, you win the bloke of the week. Good job, buddy. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. Into our winners and losers of the week we go, Jesse. I'm siding with my winners of the week this week. I'm giving it to Richmond, who had a pretty, I say an easy win. They were pretty much in the driver's seat for this whole game. Colton didn't kick a goal in the first quarter. And they just sort of like sat back and let Colton mess the ball up, but he turned it over. And then they just score from turnovers. Like, it was a wet night. Colton like to sort of play an aggressive uh, style where they take the game on. Richmond would just have enough pressure around the ball to turn it over. Couple chips down the wing, and that that'd be sweet. Um, they've won seven out of their last ten. They've only lost once since round seven, and that loss come against Sydney. So they're tracking well. The Tigers. They are on their way to. I'm not going to say a premiership because that's very far fetched. <laughs> Can Richmond win the premiership? Title off this video. But the Tigers are playing very good stuff at the moment, and I think. What has stood out for me this this season has been their sort of general and halfback defenders. Guys like Liam Baker, Dan, uh, Daniel Rioli's had a great season at halfback. Vlosten's one of the best uh, general defenders in the game. I'm probably missing a few in there as well. Uh, Jaden Short, he's always popping up for 25 plus most weeks. So when they can rebound off their defensive 50 and score from turnovers, they're a threat to a lot of sides. And Colton couldn't hack it, Jesse. Yeah, Richmond are a funny one. I think it's a credit to them, uh, the way they've kind of transitioned their list. Like they've quite, uh, they've really re-imaged it. When you think about, you know, it's a team that's been good for, you know, five, six years now. Um, obviously had a down year last year, but I think they're back to playing their sort of signature brand. And um, with a team that has been, you know, a little bit transient, they don't rely on their older veterans anymore. You know, Dusty's not in the side. Um, you know, Rewalt isn't quite the same player he was. Likewise with Cochin, and yet they're still playing to a pretty good standard that I think should get them into finals. Uh, I, don't, I can't remember where they sit right now, but they'll be around the mark. And um, I think they're a good enough team to win one. So I think it's a credit to them. They've they've invested in youth, um, and they're still playing their brand of footy, even though they've um, you know reimaged their list, as I said. Colton's big pillar down back, Jacob Wiedering, obviously gone. Did a uh, AC joint a few weeks ago. They just haven't looked the same since. He was a, a beacon of hope down back for them. They just yeah down back. They haven't had that organisation. They brought in Durden, who they got in the mid season draft, and he's out now. I think he got injured as well. So um yeah, we've got Colton next week, and it's a good time to get him. I reckon because they are not playing good football at all. A big moment in this game, Jesse, was when Shy Bolton taunted Doherty, ran into the goal square with his tongue out, and kicked the ball into the third tier. And we have a question uh, from Footy Aesthetics who wants to know what are your thoughts on Shy Bolton's taunts? Is he getting ahead of himself? And I'm not having any of it, Jesse. I said it in my nine things we learned. Why don't we just put robots out there that don't have any personality who just, you know, kick the ball through the goals and that's it. And then they go off, they recharge for the rest of the week and they're never to be seen again. Like, if a player can't stick their tongue out and kick the ball into the crowd to get their fans up and about, what can the players do? Like, 
they are just trying to suck the personality out of this game for whatever reason, Jesse, and I'm not happy about it. That's my thoughts on the Shy Bolton taunt. What do you reckon? I think you sum it up well. Like It's good to have these moments of personality on the field, and Shy Bolton is a very good player. Um, I think, you know, Ginovan got criticized earlier in the year for probably doing the sort of arrogant stuff a little bit early, and that's probably still true of him, but I think Bolton's proven himself a little bit. So, yeah, I, I don't really care, but I, I understand why opposition fans would hate that, just in the same way that I hated Ginovan when he played against us, but then the rest of the year I don't care about him. My losers comes from the Saturday morning game, Port Adelaide versus Sydney. Port Adelaide could probably be a winner, but, you know, they're pretty up and down, so I'm going to give my losers to Sydney. Still can't put a four-quarter effort together, Jesse. And it, it's quite worrying. They got absolutely pants in the third quarter of this game and made it a very tough task to come back and win it. I don't know what it is. Like, they, that game at the MCG against Melbourne a few weeks ago, I thought, bro, I'm scared to play Sydney. And then they have a week where they just don't show up. And they've had a few games like that. That Carlton game, they sort of just went to sleep for a couple of quarters and it cost them. And it nearly happened against Richmond as well. So it's just a bit of a trend with the Swans. They're just not hacking it for four quarters at the minute, Jesse. Yeah, totally agree. I, I think they are still a young and raw side. And uh, I think uh, in the big picture, I'd rather be a side that can beat the best teams and then have their off days. Because I feel like that's easier to correct than a team that sort of just... Trud, uh, trudges along and beats the teams they're expected to beat, but doesn't really have any potential uh, to win the big game. So I, th- I think they're tracking along nicely, and we've kind of placed higher expectations on Sydney because they had a great year last year. Uh, and this seems to be, you know, it's one of those years where it seems a bit more open than than ever. Uh, and so we've placed this expectation on Sydney to be this consistent side, and maybe they're just not there yet. That's my take on it. But um, I think long term they'll be okay. I think they have the quality. Uh, to like they have a similar list demographic to Frio, if not a few years older. So I don't know, bit of a weird one. Get your comments down below of what you think about the Sydney Swans. Jesse, where do your winners and losers come from, buddy? Uh, they both come from the Friday night game. Um, so I'll start with the winners of the week. And uh, you'd have to say there's a few winners and losers this week because I only got two out of six footy tips correct. And that can't mm. possibly because uh, be because I suck. It must be because those teams <laughs> let themselves down. Um, but I, I think it's fair to say a few upsets. And the, possibly the biggest one was Essendon uh, beating St Kilda on that Friday night fixture. Um, and focusing on Essendon first First and foremost, um, you know, as I alluded to, they were a bit of a rotting corpse after making the finals last year. It's been uh, it's been a dead season for them, to be honest, and the season's more or less over. But uh, to get a morale boosting win and maybe in the back half of the year get players sort of reinvested in the game plan and um, and and a belief that they're building towards something better, I think that that is a positive win as opposed to you know just losing, uh, even though it may not affect the finals race. Essendon just brought a good pressure, like. You may not have full faith in your game plan, but the least you can do is work hard to tackle, have pressure around the ball, and not give the opposition any easy exits. And Essendon executed those basics. You've already said that your loser comes from the same game, and you're going to nominate St. Kilda. There's your losers of the week right there. They were dreadful in parts of this game, Jesse. I watched the Cardman22 vlog, and he was not happy with his Saints. Almost leaving at points in that game was was young Paddy. And it's just like, how can you show glimpses in one quarter and then the next quarter not show up and then come out firing in the third and then just get absolutely pants by Essendon? A real bipolar quarter-to-quarter performance from St. Kilda. It's a lot of what we saw last year from the Saints. Yeah, I think you summed it up well, and it's extra frustrating because it's around where, you know, a lot of the teams in that fourth to seventh glut, uh, in particular Sydney, you mentioned Carlton and now St Kilda, had an opportunity to get four points up on the competition and they they all failed. Um, so Geelong slides into fourth spot this round and arguably been the least impressive at times of the four teams. So uh, a missed opportunity for sure, and it's really evening up around that fourth to ninth range even. I think uh, the team in ninth, uh, I think it might be the Bulldogs or, or Collingwood are ninth and the Bulldogs are tenth. Yeah, um, and, and it's, it's starting, to, yeah. starting to even right up. No one's assured of a uh, top eight spot. You pretty much just answered this question. Are St. Kilda vulnerable? Could they miss the top eight from footy statics again? Um, well, top four is pretty much all but gone. Um, Collingwood, yeah, are in ninth spot. The Bulldogs, I don't think quite have it to make the top eight. They seem a bit one-dimensional for me. Um, but I reckon Gold Coast or Collingwood right now, like St. Kilda will be watching their backs for those two sides in particular. Ladies and gentlemen, buckle up, buckle up for the quick fire steamroll. Jesse's favourite segment and favourite moment of every week, really. You've been watching a lot of Star Wars, haven't you, buddy? 
I love Obi-Wan Kenobi. Continue. <laughs> All right, so quick fire steamroll, 30 seconds. Answer as many quick fire short sharp questions as you can. Are you ready, my buddy? Yeah. And we are starting in five, four, three, two. Can Port make finals? Yes. Are the Eagles finishing high? The North? Yeah. Are St Kilda overrated? Nah. Will Melbourne miss the top four? Nah. Next coach to be sacked. Oh my god. Oh my god, I'm wasting so much time. I cannot possibly think. Oh, David Noble. Great. Uh, which team outside of the top eight is most likely to pay finals? Collingwood. How many? Ah, all right, that's it. You got six. I counted them in real time this time. Um, I really handled the coach one well, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> that was a pretty tough one, to be fair. I yeah, it's tough on the top of my head. I reckon Simpson, well, maybe not sacked, but I don't know. I feel like at the end of the year, it could be could be time to say goodbye, buddy. No, nah, I don't think. I think he's pretty safe personally. He's got two years on a contract, and uh, yeah, I think it, yeah, he'll be fine. Do you reckon it's like it would be the right time though? Like, all right, you're in the mud now. Time for someone else to come in and breed some life. No, nah, we're not really the sort of club that does that. We we really let a chance, uh, coach, you know, use up all his chances. Um, and we did the same thing with Wisher, and I think he even stepped down. I, I don't think we'll do it, and I think it's risky. We've got a proven good coach, so no, nah, I wouldn't do it yet. Other games include Jesse. We'll talk about your boys, the West Coast Eagles, who played better. You moved the ball a little bit quicker. You took the game on in parts where previously you had not level at halftime with Geelong, who are notoriously very poor off the bye, ended up getting the win in the end. But what did you make of your boys' performance in this game? Yeah, I had a great time with the footy. It was uh, one of the more enjoyable games that I've been to at Optus for a while because uh, I've talked about it previously, but you know, going to Eagles home games in the past, even when we're winning, has, has been boring. But this one, um, we were just sort of riding every goal. And the, even though there was only about 33,000 people in the crowd, um, the atmosphere felt electric at times. There was one passage of play where um, I think we nailed like five tackles in a row and you, you know we just haven't seen that sort of effort all year and there was just a tingle in the crowd the crowd sort of just started cheering and obviously the one half of uh, one side of that is that you know that's how far we've fallen that's all it takes to get a, a reaction out of the crowd but it, it felt like a bit of a, um, a goosebumps moment the crowd was really around the boys and um, I think they did us proud uh, I know that we're coming off a low bar of expectation but um, no nah, good enjoyable game and uh, we definitely um, you know regained some confidence I think you got to enjoy the small wins, I suppose, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've got a question here from Hey Brian, and he wants to know, did the Eagles have a chance to get a few wins in the second half of the season? Based off that performance, maybe you got Essendon this week, so potentially, question mark? Definitely. I mean, we're coming up against a team who equally is starting to think the exact same way. Finally, we've got some momentum. Um, so they'll be coming here, and they're a quick team, um, and they'll believe that they can beat us, and, and rightfully so. I am probably thinking of tipping us, um, but I think if we play like that, like we we were, could have conceivably won that game against Geelong. We just couldn't finish, and and they scored when uh, it felt like they scored easily when it mattered. So, uh, but you know, against a lesser opponent of which there are plenty in the league, I think we would have won that game. So, uh, yeah, I think we can probably you know get three or four wins for the year. Nice, that's really good, buddy. I'm I'm happy for you. Thank you. The next game was GWS versus the Bulldogs. Thirty five goals in this game, Jesse, the highest scoring game of the year. If you were a neutral, which we both are for both of these clubs, but actually watched the game, which we did not, I had I had Fremantle to attend to. Um, it, it was a fun game to watch. I watched the KO mini back, so I pretty much am an expert on this game. Toby Green kicked seven, Norton had five, and Waitman had five. I was loving watching Cody Waitman. I watched the first quarter and a half of this game. His set shot technique, I said it in the nine things I learned, but it's impeccable, mate. Absolutely perfect. Linear build up, slowly builds up his momentum. Ball drop is good. He kicked five goals straight. Um, but the Bulldogs, you know, they scored 125 points and some of their fans might be like, hell yeah, we're coming back. Top eight, watch out. But you also conceded more than 100 points as well. So it was more of a, a Western shootout more than anything. You probably got your arm shot if we're, if we're going to continue on that, that tangent that I just made. Uh, Jesse, any thoughts on this game? Not really. I did know there were was there three, three players that kicked five goals. I think it was Green, Waitman, and Norton, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, interesting. Um, I think GWS have got a little bit about them now. I think we've seen an improvement. So, um, yeah, an away win, just tick it off for the Bulldogs. I'd be more concerned about, you know, their week-to-week fluctuations. But, you know, four points is four points. The last game of the round was Gold Coast 
versus Adelaide. I touted this to be one of the better games of the round than it probably would have been if Adelaide could kick straight. They kicked 10 goals, 13 for the game. And there was moments when I was watching it, it was like, this is a real tight contest, but the scoreboard didn't show that. And it was literally just accuracy in front of goal, mm. which Adelaide absolutely stunk at. But Gold Coast compete every single week. It's not the Gold Coast that we've become accustomed to seeing in the past where you'll just walk over him, like a top eight side would walk over him. I don't think that'll happen anymore. And they've got uh, Port Adelaide this week. I think that'll be a very close game as well. Like Gold Coast, they're a four-quarter side. They compete hard. They've got balls in the middle of the park. Might be a chol up front with uh, Caswell. Then you've got guys like Rankin and Ainsworth around them. Like They are an actual, genuine good side. I wouldn't be surprised if they snuck into the eight with the run home that they have. Um, and there's a question here from Riley Burns who wants to know how far are the Suns off being a top eight team? They've made massive improvements this year. So if it's not this year, they could definitely potentially be in the mix next season, I reckon. I think a lot comes down to how well can they retain. So they've uh, they've retained fairly well. I think Ben King's re-signed. I believe Lukosius and Rankin uh, need to re-sign. But I think even if you don't necessarily think those two players are integral right now, uh, they just can't keep bleeding, bleeding players for their culture. Mm. Um, but, you know, if all things go well, and uh, then I'd say as early as next year. I mean, there is sn- a sniff for this year, but I think there's... A few teams just slightly ahead of them, that, um, and, and it's hard to really feel confident about them lasting the whole season, even though they've definitely done better than we've ever seen. Um, I'm still not quite there yet, so I'd say next year. On to the tips. This next round coming up is one of the most important rounds of the season in terms of the ladder positioning. So we've got Melbourne versus Brisbane, which is second versus first. Uh, the Bulldogs, the Bulldogs versus Hawthorne, which is tenth versus fourteenth, sort of in the similar similar ballpark. Those two sides, eighteenth versus sixteenth, Essendon and West Coast. Real then you got Col- the Titans. <laughs> Colton versus Frio, fifth versus third. Geelong versus Richmond, fourth versus sixth. Sydney and St Kilda, seventh versus eighth. Uh, and then North Melbourne, Adelaide, two bottom teams. Collingwood, GWS in that like bottom end of or the top end of the bottom eight. Um, and then you've got Gold Coast versus Port, who are still trying to make finals. So it's a, a big round of football, Jesse. It's going to have massive ramifications for the ladder. It'll be chopping and changing for the in the entire weekend, I believe. The first game is Melbourne versus Brisbane. Uh, Melbourne at home. Who are you going to pick in this one? This is a tricky one because they were considered the two top contenders, but in recent times haven't been too great, I don't think. Yeah, I, I don't have too much confidence in Brisbane beating them at the G, to be honest. I, I think Melbourne won't lose four in a row. They'll they'll come good. We'll maybe back in. I don't know. I th- was this, He was a concussion, wasn't he? So there's always a question mark there. But I think he's due to come back, but he just may not come up, you know. All right, I'm going to tip Melbourne, but I wouldn't mind a big upset win from Brisbane just to really sink Melbourne. That'd be <laughs> nice. Uh, and then we've got... The Bulldogs versus Hawthorne, two Friday night games. I'm not a fan of that. Yeah, um, I agree. The Bulldogs, I just they just haven't done anything to convince me. I know they had like a massive scoring effort against GWS, but you know GWS don't have a formidable defense. Hawthorne, I've liked this season. They've come off the bye after almost beating us. I'm probably gonna tip Hawthorne to be honest. Wow. I'm very confident in the Bulldogs, uh, but this is the sort of game Hawthorne would just bob up and win. But I think with Hawthorne, I don't think there's a team in the comp right now with such a big gap between their best and worst. Uh, although mm. you could say maybe West Coast because our worst is so bad. Um, <laughs> so by default, but yeah, no, Hawthorne's it, like their best footy is good and their worst footy is terrible. 92% of people are tipping the Bulldogs and I agree with that. Um, but it, it could be an upset, but yeah, I don't see it. I'm in a minority in more ways than one. Yes. Uh, yeah, we true. got West Coast. You are very subtly Essendon. Asian. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's a majority, isn't it? Surely. Yeah, but here it's a minority for now. Yeah, true. Not racist. <laughs> West Coast versus Essendon. Who are you going to tip for that one? I'm, gonna tip I'm, bl- I'm blindly tipping West Coast. I think we played well enough. If we played Essendon this week, I think we would have won. But then Essendon fans will be saying the exact same thing because they, <laughs> they probably didn't watch our game and I didn't watch their game. So... <laughs> um, <laughs> Essendon, look, Essendon are the sort of team we don't match up well on because they are a very quick side and they break us down very easily. I just feel like we've had a bit of a taste and I reckon the last two weeks have been a huge improvement, so I think we'll win. Uh, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, Colton versus Frio. This is a massive game. I've always hated playing Colton, whether home or away. We're in the best form we've been in in a long time. Colton are not in good form. How good would it be to go over to Marvel and beat Colton? I'm tipping Frio. I'm tipping Frio too. It would take a bad day for them to lose, but that is still possible. So I'll say Frio, if both teams play well, 
We, oh, yeah. mind you, Carlton's top footy is very good, but I'm less confident of them playing well, whereas I'm more confident in Freo playing well. Their top footy is two and a half good quarters. Yeah, that's um, very true. So the only concern I have is Freo not showing up, but we haven't done that yeah. since like round three. So yeah, I, I hopefully agree. Freo get up. Uh, Geelong versus Richmond at the MCG. Gee, my Yeah, that's tough. That, that's literally a 50 50. Mm. Uh, see, Geelong are in pretty good form, I feel. Like they've won quite a few on the bounce now. Mm. But then again, so have Richmond. Uh, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna go Geelong. <laughs> I'll go I'll with Geelong, Geelong too, but I really respect Richmond. In fact, they're sixth on the ladder. Um, I think they have been playing great footy, but they are more prone to shit days than I think Geelong are at the moment. So mm-hmm. I think head to head Geelong. Yeah. Sydney versus St Kilda at the SCG. Man, that's tough. But I'm gonna get I'm gonna get two tips right this week. Yeah. Literally. Uh, this game last one. year, St Kilda dominated but couldn't convert in front of goal, and I feel like St Kilda probably right now are in that Sydney, that sort of Sydney mix, like Sydney, um, you know those sides outside of the top four. So yeah, they didn't show up last week, but could they this week? It's a real eight point game. This um, the Sa- well, the Swans aren't that good at home, which makes me think it's going to even up. But ninety percent of people are tipping Sydney. I find that I want to tip St Kilda crazy. I like that tip. I think I'll just go... I'll be a basic bitch and tip Sydney, but I, I do like that upset call by you. You know how I always change my tips at the last second? I uh, did that no. again last week. <laughs> well, I, I do. Okay. I said last week on the on uh, the Drew Footy Show, I was like, oh, I'll tip Richmond to beat Carlton, and I changed it to Carlton. Rats. Conker. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, you did. Yeah, that's right. I suck. Yeah, uh, North sucks. Melbourne versus Adelaide down in Tassie. I mean, North Melbourne are <sighs> diabolical. They are. So... For that reason, I'll tip Adelaide. I they they sometimes play well at Blunston, but they've been so bad this year that I can't tip them at the moment. Yeah, yeah. So Adelaide, yeah. Collingwood beat GWS, I think. Yeah, they should do. GWS is better than the six percent only. Uh, only six percent of people tipping them. I think they're better than that. But uh, Collingwood are very very good at on their day. So uh, they could not show up, but I think Collingwood should win. And then the last game of the round is Port Adelaide versus Gold Coast. I'm so tempted to tip Gold Coast here. Yeah, I don't trust Port not to have a shit game straight after a good yeah. one. Yeah, they haven't been great this season either, Port. Like yeah. they've been very hot and cold. And yeah. Gold Coast will be a tough match. Like mm. you have to be able to match Gold Coast around the stoppages for four quarters if you're going to beat them. Um, I think that's Port's strength, though. I think they're also a pretty good stoppage team when you consider mm. the players they've got in that midfield. I'll go Port, but I can see why you'd be tempted. I'll go Port as well because I don't want to put my neck on the line. There's the tips, and there's another episode of the Drew Footy Show. Let me know down below what you thought of Round 14's action and get in the comments what you thought, uh, what you think of the upcoming round. Make sure you like the video to support me in the YouTube algorithm. Jesse, sign us off with a joke. Time to say goodbye. Thank you. Anytime. Bye. <laughs> Andrea Vercelli is actually coming to Perth, I think.